Hi, and welcome back to episode two of Better Than De Boer, where I'm trying to take Crystal Palace into a better Premier League season than they've seen so far. Uh, we didn't have the best of times last time, which we'll sort of overlap and elaborate on today. Uh, first of all, I just want to do a quick apology, really. Uh, yesterday's video was a bit long, uh, went on for about 35 minutes, mostly a lot of warbling on at the start, uh, which maybe in hindsight could have been a separate episode like an intro episode of its own right um the editing quality um was a, leaves a bit to be desired as well i'm still getting to grips with that a little bit the outro uh was a little bit abrupt i'm still getting to grips with queuing up scenes um do it, actually using the software itself so and i wasn't happy with the ending uh, that i'd recorded didn't really have the opportunity today to to re-record that and to be honest i'm not 100 percent up to speed with the, the editing software yet so before this one starts dragging on a bit too much um we'll get into today's episode so last time out obviously we lost to Huddersfield we lost to Burnley in the first game of the season as well we did manage to score a goal so we're already doing better than De Boer um but not quite up to to Roy's standard just yet he obviously won yesterday um but so what's happened since we uh since last time so I have played a few games and we were, I was originally saying I'd come back for the Leicester and Southampton game I believe it was. Um, there was an international window, there was the deadline day, so I decided to play the Leicester game, just try and get on a bit of a run. Um, and obviously there was a couple of games before that which I'll touch on now, so uh, let's, let's get into that and see what happened. So as you can see we played Charlton in the Carabao Cup second round. Um, we drew one all, uh, had to go to penalties in the end. To be fair, should not have got to that stage. Uh, we went 1-0 up um, with Jason Punch and scoring the goal quite early on, 13 minutes. And we were fairly comfortable in the game, dominating the game for, for large parts. Um, they did hit a pr pr quite brilliant equaliser on just after the half hour mark. It's about it's about 25 yards out and just he just buried it um, from long range. But if we look at the match stats, we had 22 shots but only 5 on target. 62% uh, possession which is good but again we're just not quite doing enough with it to justify it and they had six shots three on target that was one shot one on target until about 80 minutes most of their sh other shots really come in extra time when obviously we were starting to get a bit tired they were as well but I think they made a bit more use of subs um, to, to get around the fitness you can see they've got a bit better fitness than us generally I'd say but yeah on penalties it wasn't great uh, we missed two of our first three, I think it was, if I recall. And with the new penalty layout as well, it's a bit hard harder to, to go into detail with. But they ended up missing the last one, and we, we scored one, one. I think it was 3-2? 3-2, yeah. So we're through. Um, skin of our teeth, really. Uh, not a major competition, but any win I, I can get, I'll take at the moment, because we just really need to build up that reputation happiness with the board happiness with the players and just keep it going really um after that we did then play Bournemouth in the league and came away with a 2-1 win uh Fosu Mensah getting both the goals from right back I believe he was playing no he was he's playing centre back so one of them was a corner uh and the other one was just generally from open play we went 2 up we were cruising quite nicely and then again they just kind of hit one back around that half hour mark again um they did have a player sent off in extra time, but it didn't really have any bearing on, on how the game went. We we were pretty comfortable. Obviously, when they pulled it back to 2-1, it was a bit worrying. But overall, I think we had enough just to see out the game. And obviously, we did and got the three points, which pulled us out of the bottom three uh, as it stood. Uh, so, as I said, we went on to the uh, Leicester game. Trying to build a bit of momentum from the, from the Bournemouth game. Uh, our following the Bournemouth game, we were at home again. But we just weren't even in this game. Um... Dominated in possession, they scored, yeah, just, you know, ran that half hour mark again, and then early in the second half, and we were out of it. Mares got injured in the second half, but it wasn't enough to stop stop them winning the game, really, and we just, we just, 
although the stats maybe don't look quite as bad, the shots and target is still very poor. Um, I just never at any point felt we were going to get back into this game. And as it was, yeah, we lost 2-0. Um, as you can see, the draw for the Carabao Cup third round has been made. Uh, it's Tottenham away, so another London derby. So that's another reason why I left the uh, Leicester game out, because I wanted to bring it back to that one. It's a bit more importance to it, even though it's the Carabao Cup and I'm not playing too much importance on it. It's still a London derby and it's still against Tottenham, who, if we go to the league table, are doing pretty well. They played an extra game, but they're still on those, you know, on 12 points level with the two Manchester clubs. Arsenal and Chelsea, as you'd expect, cl quite close behind. Liverpool, having a bit of an indifferent season, a bit inconsistent, um, perhaps relating to, to real life a little bit. But we're there in 15th, that win just sort of dragging us out. Swansea, Bournemouth, who obviously we beat down there, West Brom and Everton, you know, not far off how they're doing in real life. Um, obviously still haven't appointed the manager on this, they've got Sean Dyche, but he's not working his magic just yet. As you can see, we've got Swansea, Newcastle and Everton and West Brom coming up and they're all around us, the must win games. Um, so let's see what we're going to go on to next. Um, so we come next to transfers, so obviously transfer deadline day it's about 15, 15 days, 16 days past now. We did manage to do a bit of business. Um, wasn't quite the sort of business I was hoping to do. I was hoping to bring in, on deadline day itself, we had quite a few deals sort of going through. Ben Arthur on loan, well, initially a transfer, didn't wasn't interested in a loan for Ben Arthur from Paris Saint-Germain. We had uh, Nars Singh from Swansea, possibly coming through in a transfer. Uh, James Wilson coming on loan from United. Um, we have a few other players that we were waiting on work permits for they just got declined they weren't going through one of them was a new right back one of them was a striker um, obviously i've mentioned before the need for a quality striker in this team uh, or not even just quality just bodies really with, with benteke really the only recognized sort of quality striker at the club um but like i said we did manage to get some deals in the first one giuseppe rossi on a free transfer he's still injured he's been out for about 18 months I think from the stats but I'd noticed him early on in the game and to be honest I was going to go for him but I really thought he'd be a player that I'd be snapping up in January rather than September um, but with a couple of weeks just to go till, he, till he's back he's back in full training now uh, or light training I think it was they said but I think you know you can't look past him really as a quality player he's started from Man United obviously had a few loan spells Villarreal is where I remember him being a really good player you know hitting double figures for a couple of seasons he did so with Fiorentina as well, but he's always been just a bit injury prone. But he, you know, he's still only 30 years old. He's got 30 caps for Italy, worth five million now. Um, I think he can come in. He's he offers something a little bit different up front, a bit more, a bit more mobile. He's got the 15 dribbling. He's got the good first touch, the good passing. You know, pace isn't quite what it was. Agility maybe not quite what it was, but I think he can still come in and certainly do something either alongside Benteke, possibly behind Benteke. Um, let's see what happens. Second one is another striker, uh, 1.3 Karim Ansarifard. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably absolutely slaughtered his name. Uh, he's coming from Olympiacos for 1.3 million. He's played one game, hasn't really done a great deal. I believe that was against Leicester. So no one really come come out shot covered in glory in that game. I don't think, it, well, obviously not. Yeah, he's been a bit of a Nomadic, well, they describe him as a nomadic striker. So he's, you know, he's done the rounds a little bit, mostly around the Greek leagues in recent years. He's played in the Spanish second division, the Iranian first Premier League, I presume that is. You know, he's, he's close to 100 goals in 250 games. Um, I'm not quite sure. 1.65 million. What I said, 165 million. I thought that was crazy. Um, so, I, you know, a bit of a panic buy. It was all I could get in really. But if I play him in the right position and with the right roles and the right players getting the right service around him I think he could you know for at least this year or maybe until January do, do a bit of a job um, did we have anyone else go out Bakary Sacco went to Hull 6 million rising to nearly 8 million he was one of our better players I'd say in, in the season uh, certainly in pre-season but I just don't think he was you know cutting it really um, he wasn't quite the level he needed Zaha coming back um, I had a few deals that I thought were going to go through. Ben Arthur particularly, I thought, and Narsing would be the ones that would have been 
the next step up from him. But obviously they fell through, but his deal had already gone through. Jeffrey Schlupp has gone to Lille, uh, 9 million. Rising to, he's playing all right for them as well, but didn't really have space for him in our setup. But rising to nearly 13 million with add-ons. So if we can get anywhere sort of close to that sort of money over the next couple of years from him, the extra sort of 3 million, 4 million, I'll be more than happy. So now we're going to jump into the first game, which is away at Southampton. Um, they've got it as evens uh, for Southampton to win this game. Uh, they are seventh. Their recent form is inconsistent, much much as is ours. Um, they've got quite a few injuries as well, so that could hopefully work in our favour. But like I say, they, they're they seventh, they're not doing too badly. Um, if we just have a look at the league table and see sort of what that actually equates to. So they've... 1-2, drawn 1, lost 1, lost to Drew with West Ham, lost to Man City, so not surprising. And they beat Tottenham, surprisingly, and they beat Watford. So they're a dangerous team, especially possibly at home, I'd imagine. Uh, so we have, for this game, I did a bit, a little bit of looking uh, what we were doing wrong, what we could improve, sort of in the last games. Um, I tried to see what, you know, what improvements I could make going into this game. Um, I've gone back to a... A sort of system I was using in in pre-season that seemed to work obviously it wasn't against great teams so we'll see if it can do something against Southampton but it does seem to have given punch in and ward a link um, yeah so we've got a bit more creativity in the midfield I'd say a bit more well we've got the red mark the red boxes here but I think it will do the job I've got um, a few more different systems in the background that I can switch to if I need to uh, We've got so we're starting with the new striker up front and Sarif Fard. We're going to uh, Benteke should be on the bench. Yes, he is. Uh, we've got um, I want to put if he isn't already Alfonso, who he's on the bench. I want to keep him on the bench. Um, just bring in case Loftus Cheek doesn't quite have the desired effect. So we've got him in the advanced playmaker on support. We've got Punchin and Townsend on the inside forward roles. We've got James MacArthur playing as a Carrillero, I want to say the role's called. It's one of the new roles this year. From what I've been reading and looking into, it sort of covers the, the, the sort of wide areas across here rather than as a box-to-box, -box, which sort of up and down. He's very much side-to-side, -side, which with the inside forwards ahead of him could be sort of very much needed. Uh, we've got Kabaya playing as a Roman playmaker. So again, he'll be, he'll be covering those centre midfields, trying to get the balls to the forward, the forwards there. And again, we're trying to keep... It's a, it's a pretty much balance between the Palace style, but also trying to just bring a bit of better football in. Uh, we've got the full back sitting on attack. We're going to play with Van Harnholt today at left back and Joel Ward at right back. Uh, Fosu Mensah at centre back because obviously he got those two goals against Bournemouth and he's a threat in the air. So, you know, looking good. And also Sacco is injured. And we're going to go with Dan at centre back and Hennessy in goal. So let's get into it. Uh, and Anholt is tired, so we might have to bring Suarez on at some point during this game, but that's really not a problem. He's he's a very good player as well. And left back is probably a position where I'm sort of blessed with a few options. Um against the against Bournemouth I did hand over to the assistant for the team talk. He seems to get a bit more out of them, but that isn't really happening today. Um so send assistant to the Tunt the pre match interview as well. So let's get into it. We've got the league table on the right hand side now, we've got the match stats here, so we can just keep an eye on what's happening. We've got early chance here, Townsend, out to Punchin, and it looks like, oh, we've got a penalty in the in the second minute. He's stepping up. Kabai steps up, and he's missed, and he's missed the rebound. Uh, it looked like it was going to be such a great start against, you know, a good Southampton team away from home, but if we can keep on... Pressure and well, Chelsea have just taken a 1-0 lead against West Brom. And we have a free kick again, goodbye. Again, we go close. So we're, we're exerting a bit of pressure. Possession's a bit more even, but we are creating a few more chances. Again, not many as many on target as I'd like. Um, so if we can just convert a few more of those to be on target and get a few goals out of it, I'll be more than happy. So we've come back again. Punching. Fosu Mensa. Oh, so Fosu Mensa comes close again. He's, he's already our top scorer. Could have got another one there. Goodbye with the corner. Loftus cheek and another chance. This one on target, so we're starting to hit a few more on target. Another free kick now from Dan. All the highlights are coming our way. We just need to, while we're on top, just make one of them count. The new striker punching. Loftus cheek goodbye. 
and the ball through isn't great but if we're still going we've got possession back lost his cheek and again the ball through is is poor and this is where we've got to be wary because Southampton it would be more than typical now for them to and they have Charlie Austin has gone straight up the other end and put one put one past us we don't need to see that that is embarrassing after such a good start and it looks like they're going to try and press that advantage now and into a move through to Stephen Davis, Charlie Austin and Buffal close again so Southampton very much coming back into the game so we just need to see this out good clearance there again we just need to see out this this little spell West Brom have equalised against Chelsea uh, obviously sat their manager what the weekend last week last week so West Brom that is obviously not Chelsea Fosu Mensa up to punch in. oh the mistake there by the defender and the new striker second game for the club and he has banged one goal this by Jason Punchin. Punchin was a player that was potentially looking to, to maybe offload but he he just versatility he can play quite a few positions quite a, you know both sides of the wing so he's a vital player to keep there so the assistant's telling me we need to try and retain possession but with half time coming up I don't think we need to worry about that too much just now we're, we're playing well we just need to a bit more a bit more composure at the back we're going to go to the assistant again everyone's everyone's happy everyone's happy so kick off the second half if we can just build on that first half maybe grab a second Southampton get a free kick uh, I might need to take off Van Han Holt soon because obviously they mentioned he was a bit tired at the start of the game um, and he's on a yellow card now as well so we don't want to risk and he's looking nervous so we don't want to risk him getting sent off because you know we're very much in this game still and Townsend isn't able to get that ball and they're threatening again and Storaro makes it 2-1 we're very much in this game the possession is just killing us a little bit at the moment uh, let's see maybe we will just try and retain we can't retain possession with what we're doing at the moment so let's just drop that on see what that does there we go so we're on the attack Loftus cheek Townsend at the back post I don't think the changes have taken place yet but we're back to 2-2 I don't care um, if we have to change it back I will do you know what we're not going to proceed with the changes we'll keep this we'll, we'll keep it as we're going we'll keep it as we're playing Scott Dan's playing not great either I'm being told which considering he's conceded two goals and he's on a booking is quite obvious so we can make two changes at the back the two players that are booked uh, Suarez on for Anholt and the young Ajax lad on for what well, God my Ajax eat Reader Wild on for Scott Dan so 65 minutes gone now and we're still still looking like we're in this game the shots on target is very much something I need to address because it, it's not quite good enough but the threat on the wings it's very much there with these with these two guys. And, oh, and Townsend comes close again. Cleared away for a throw in, but obviously we don't get the highlight on from that. Alright, let's uh last five minutes, let's uh get the big man up front. Then Teke has to come on. We have to give him some some sort of time here to see what he can do. Uh, we're gonna change him to a target man support. Let's see if that helps us at all. Try and bring the wingers you know into the game a bit more because they do seem to be the the threat for us and it would help if i started the game so three minutes to go can benteke have any sort of impact doesn't look like it it looks like the game is just going to peter out to a to a 2-2 draw which away from home at southampton well benteke was going to make it through then as long as they don't can we can we create something at the end here <sighs> no we're just sort of hoofing it out aimlessly really but so are they and a 2-2 draw and uh, that's not a bad result away at Southampton at all uh, it's something to build on uh, let's 
So let's have a word with goodbye ourself. Mm, didn't really work. Goodbye had a good game, if not spectacular. So I'm not too sure why he's unhappy there. So we're going to regroup for a little bit of a rest. Uh, give the players a bit of a rest because we've got a game on Wednesday away at Tottenham. So we'll be back for that short. Okay, and here we are, back to the uh, Carabao Cup, away against Tottenham, obviously at Wembley now. So we have actually made it to Wembley this season, even if it's only a cup game in September. Uh, so let's, see, let's get into it. So we, obviously Tottenham heavy favourites. Again, their form is marked as inconsistent, but they've got a few injuries. They've got Deli Alley out, Danny Rose out, but I really don't think that's going to hurt them too much. I'm sure they've got enough, enough there to, to cope with it. So I'm going to try a little bit of a different setup today. I've created a few more, like I said, a few more different tactics to try and work behind um, which ones I've got. I'm going to go with the 442. Just keep it, try and keep it a bit basic. Um, again, we've got a few roles in there that I'm not sure if they're going to quite work. I'm just sort of trying them out and seeing what happens. But uh, let's give it a go. It's Tottenham in the cup. We've It's just trying something a bit different, really. Um, see if it has any success. We've, we can always fall back to the one we played against. It looks like they're playing a few youngs out there and a few fringe players. Harry Kane left mid by the looks of it. I don't know who this Edwards bloke is. Uh, Harry Winks in midfield. Foyf at the back. El Fede at the back. Warming goal, very much back up. Lorente, back up striker. So, you know, we're... They're not taking it seriously. Um, you know, we're not particularly taking it seriously, but a win against Tottenham is a win against Tottenham, regardless of what they're, what they're doing. So... Let's see what we can do with this new 4-4-2. We've had a shot on target already, but obviously hasn't really come to anything highlight worthy. So they're knocking it about us quite nicely, but we're... And we're 1-0 down in two minutes. Maybe this isn't the, the way to go. They scored with their first shot. But like I said, wasn't expecting too much against Tottenham. Uh, so anything we can do just to... Just to try and disrupt them a little bit, and we might have a little change up at half time because, despite the goal, there's not a lot happening. They are, you know, we put we're dominating possession, bizarrely. Which, no, actually not bizarrely, because I've, mm, I have kind of set it up that way. But with four four two against, you know, they've got they've got two in the middle and three up the top, so they're quite top heavy in there in what they're doing. But we are just. We have had a few shots on goal, a few shots on target. Possession's quite even, but we just haven't really seen anything worthwhile yet. Here we go, it's our first chance, Ward down the right hand side, and I very much across. Uh I'm sure William might have something to say about that, but obviously seeing what his goal at the weekend. And they're on the attack again. Lorente has somehow beaten us for pace. Well, don't know how, because he <laughs> he's got about eight pace or something. So 1-0 down, but we're still very much in the game. Um, I don't know whether to change anything or... Right, I don't really know what makes... And we bizarrely tried to score from the kickoff. I don't know what that was about. I've never seen that on the game before. Um, so we've got a free kick here. Soiree into that. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible mistake. And we should be punished here. And Hennessy has bailed us out, really. So... Let's see, corner to Tottenham, and it's cleared away, and I don't know what's going on with these highlights, and they're two, one, two and up. We need to make changes. So, we're going to drop to this one, so we're going to push Benteke, oh, we don't really want to play him in false nine roll, but we don't really have much else I can do. Um, Lievich on the Kai Kai, so we're going to bring, make that change there. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to work. Who else is having a stinker? Scott Dan again. Might have to consider dropping him altogether, but let's see what else have I got I can bring on. Not a great deal at the moment. But we're on the, well, we were on the attack, but nothing highlight as, of course. So, we've made our change. Let's see if this can sort of bring us any more fortune. Yeah, they're playing two two in the middle, so we're tr trying to overpower that a little bit with our three. 
and um, we've still got the three up front um, you know, despite their two goal lead they haven't really troubled us that much you know which is a strange thing to say when you're 2-0 down but it's literally been two highlights that have ended in goal so we're going to do this uh, he's going to drop back in there uh, we're going to take James MacArthur off. We're going to give, where is he, Sousa a game. And see what we can do. Ten minutes to go. Just getting a goal back here, just for a bit of pride, I think would be would be something. But, you know, this, this was very much an experiment. Um, didn't have much faith we were going to get anything against Tottenham anyway regardless who they put out and they've got a nah, it's finished 2-0 so yeah not not great but you know it's, it's one less cup we've got to worry about too much it, it was top okay maybe we don't give it to the assistant anymore that wasn't the best <laughs> team talk there um so yeah ease to victory yeah that's absolutely to be expected so let's see where we're going to come back to next time we've got like I said, we've got a couple of games coming up against some teams that are hovering around us, really. We could come back for Newcastle, Everton, who are sort of there as well. Uh, Newcastle, Everton below us, Newcastle just above. But I think we give them give them games to go. We come back for West... No, Swansea and, Bro Swansea and Newcastle, so will be the next games. So Swansea are at bottom, Newcastle just above us. But I think we give those a, a play and we come back for Everton and West Brom. So... Everton below us, West Brom, I believe, uh, below us as well. Yeah, so we can see what we can get from these next two games and come back for that. So hopefully I'll see you next time.